Hey, hello, hello everybody and welcome to the first of our culinary career sessions um, all around sectors within the um, hospitality industry, our fantastic industry. And I'm very pleased to say that these sessions are supported by caterer.com. Just to let you know a little bit about caterer.com, they are the um, industry's hiring platform, matching the right people with the right jobs. So working with businesses to ensure that they are finding the right people and working with people to ensure that they are finding the right businesses as well. Caterer.com are focused on supporting hospitality people through every stage of their um, job seekers journey um, which is why they collaborate very closely with employers industry bodies and charities to create content and resources that empower them through that journey and currently caterer.com have 13.5k jobs listed on average across the biggest some of the biggest hospitality brands in the sector so if you are looking um, for your next steps caterer.com is an amazing platform for you to be able to use as well and um, so please do utilize that and we'll be sending some links through for you also as well um, so thank you very much to Caterer.com for sponsoring this and also a huge thank you um, to um, two of the chefs that we have on today. We are just waiting for somebody else to come and I'm sure that they will drop in as soon as possible. But I would like to introduce you um, today um, and thank you to the schools as well for joining us. I'd like to introduce you today to um, Shane. Shane is um, works at Handpicked Hotels and I'm not going to tell you too much about um, Shane. I'm going to let her introduce herself too. And we also have Sam Kens who works for Restaurant Associates, which is part of Compass. So would you, Shane, do you want to just um, kind of introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about um, who you are, what you're doing at the moment. Hello, hello, I'm Shane. Um, I'm a female chef, Eva Mkoshe. Um, at the moment, I'm working for Handpick Hotel, um, the hotel space in Weatherby uh, near Leeds, uh, kind of in between Leeds and Harrogate. And I'm the head chef here. Um, where to start? I've been chef for a long time, really. I've worked all different types of business like catering, golf club, restaurants and hotels from all the way from China to Australia to the UK. Fantastic. So you've done a lot of traveling with your job. Yes. People say chefs are travelers. They are. Absolutely. They absolutely are. And Sam, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody today? Yeah, so hi there. I'm Sam. I currently am a head chef for um, Restaurant Associates that's part of Compass Group. Uh, we're a large food service company. Um, and we offer food service solutions across all sorts of different things from um, government contracts, schools and uh, restaurant associates that I work for is a specific part of the company. We focus on corporate hospitality um, and executive dining. Um, Brilliant. I've worked before Compass um, in restaurants and hotels and things, um, but after my degree education, um, have been with Compass ever since and worked in all different parts of the business. Fantastic. That's amazing. Um, so let's have let's dive into it a little bit, um, a little bit further, because obviously um, you start out your career in a particular role. Um, so, Shane, just tell me, how how did you start in the industry? How did you get into that? What kind of roles were you involved with? Um, it's very interesting. Kind of the career chose me, not I chose the career somehow. That's how I feel. Um, so I. I moved to Australia from China and then at that time I got two choices. One is um, study cookery, another is hairdressing and <laughs> I, I love food so I chose cooking and then I did my two years uh, training in Australia, we called TAFE and then straight away I got the opportunity to finish my bachelor in hotel management in Australia as well. It is great because at the same time in, when you're in school learning you already have an um, opportunity to go to real business to to work as a chef. Brilliant so would you do you think that actually being in the industry and studying it as well was a real advantage for you? Definitely is Um, I think that is one of the strength I have because I actually been trained properly the theory part and the practical but um, all the practice is happened in the real business uh, like Langham Hotel uh, or one for festival and um, it's just all different types of events <clears throat> excuse me all different types of events as well so as a student this is like open your eyes and we got opportunity to meet to, to meet all different chefs 
And at that time, you just like how people can do this. The art, like, <laughs> so creative. It's just like artists. So that is to keep your passion going. Definitely, it's it's beneficial. Brilliant. And you know, what kind of roles have you had in the industry? So I work all the way from making sandwiches, making cheese platter, and cut food, till all the way till head chef. Um, like what I said, my background, I worked for catering for about four years, and I work in golf club, which is slightly different. So we just um, cater people who play golf there, and some events, and mainly I work for restaurants and hotels. Um, I love both. In the restaurant, you kind of you can meet customers, you can get the feedback straight away, so you can actually talk to people, and then to get that reward straight back. Uh, in the hotels or catering, it's more about the organization as well. So it's part of the training. You know how to organize your day, how to work efficiently. So eventually, those will benefit um, my career. Absolutely. So getting a, a vast sort of cross sector of, of different sectors that you can work in and the different roles that you can work in as well. Definitely. Fantastic. Well, I'll come back to you in a moment, um, Shane, but I'm going to kind of ask the same questions to you as well, Sam. So, you know, you're working for a food service management company and I'll let you explain um, what a food service management company is. But, you know, how did you start your career? Were you always in there? You know, did you go straight into a, a chef role? Did you start as a commie? What, what kind of opportunities um, and things have you undertaken? So for me, it actually started with um, college education at UWL. I did my um, level three over two years there. And while doing that, I worked in um, restaurants and hotels and things, including um, stages via my college in Michelin star restaurants um, and things like that. And then it's um, from there, I progressed into a degree also at UWL. And then from my degree, I joined into um, Compass Group and I've been there for nearly seven years now ever since. Oh, fantastic. So did you do the uh, graduate? scheme with um with compass or did you go straight from no. university no it was a job so part way through my degree um i got a job with um compass working shift work around my degree um, and Fantastic. Stayed there. Stuff. so what kind of roles have you had in the industry so far sam so um obviously since leaving restaurants and things and um, compass is so broad in that we offer solutions to all sorts of different contracts that i've worked anywhere from Heathrow airport to oxford university to um different banks and things in canary wharf because we offer solutions for such a wide range of things um and that's the best part about it is that i've had such varied roles within the same company that's fantastic and do you feel that that's helped with you build your skills to help you you know sort of train other people get other people into the industry as well absolutely every different place you work in whether it's a hotel a restaurant an office or um you're always going to be um exposed to different situations different problems and each one you you learn how to approach them differently and each one teaches you a different thing fantastic that's really really great um so thank you for that sam um so so I'm just saying with you, what would you say to somebody who is considering a career as a chef? You know, the different opportunities that are available in the kitchen. Are they going to come straight in and be a head chef or is there a kind of a layer for them to be able to do that? And, and how could they do that through an organisation? It's definitely um, progression, but um, it should always be based on a foundation of um, just really good early education. Like things I've learned in my college education, basic skills, a foundation of skills is always going to be applicable even to me now and it will continue to be applicable to me always. So um, a head chef is a job that anyone can achieve, but um, you should always start with a basis of a really good education and, and get into a company where you know they're going to help nurture you and help continue your education always, um, because I'm still learning now, um, but it's definitely all comes down to, to starting off in the right way. Fantastic. And what kind of opportunities have you been offered with Compass and with Restaurant Associates? So the really interesting thing is that even though I'm already degree educated, I'm now an apprentice again. So I've gone into a senior apprenticeship um, and I'm now doing um, an apprentice course that is part of my job here at Compass um, um, with Marcus Waring. So it's called the Marcus Waring Forward Programme. So it's about um, continuing our education for senior chefs and about how we can take our industry into the future and make it more future proof. That's brilliant. So even as somebody who's degree educated, somebody who's in quite a senior role, your company and your organisation are still saying, hey, Sam, we've still got loads of opportunities to help to develop here. Absolutely. They're still investing in us. And it's it's a group of 
um, of us that are all senior chefs from across the business because again we're such a diverse business that what it does is it brings head chefs executive chefs and etc from all over the business into one place where we can help each other learn as well so it's not just a solo learning experience we're doing it together and we're helping ourselves to learn so it's it's one of those industries where everyone will have different experiences and everyone can always continue to to improve that's fantastic so you talked a little bit about head chefs and exec chefs there what's kind of the difference between those yeah, so um, large sites that have multiple outlets tend to have an executive chef and then each outlet will have a head chef. Um, so here on site, I'm single outlet. We have a restaurant out the front and then hospitality suites um, and up to the boardroom. But that's all comes under me as a head chef. For example, a bigger contract, say a big high rise building where we've got multiple restaurants in it, multiple hospitality outlets. We will have one executive chef that looks over the whole lot of them. Fantastic. And so there's a kind of tiered system still within the organisation, but there's that opportunity to move to move up. Absolutely. And then from there, we have group chefs that look after regional areas, culinary directors that look after whole sectors and etc. So it's even though I've reached a head chef level now, there's still lots and lots of learning and progression ahead of me still. Brilliant. And what are the kind of entry positions that you have? Um, so, you know, some of our young listeners out there that are thinking, actually, it sounds really cool, Wes, you know, the kind of area that Sam's working in what where could i start how would how would they be able to to get involved so there's there's the obvious entry level commie chef positions and things like that that you can do alongside a full time study maybe take a part time job um but i'd say the best um route into the industry at the moment is is definitely through apprenticeships because um as a company we take on a really high volume of apprenticeships and what that does is that links your work to your education you'll often receive funding from the workplace um and it what that does is it reinforces your college or university education with your work and reinforces your work with the education so it really ties them in and it brings you into the industry in a way where you're learning how we work whilst also developing your foundational skills and do you get paid to do an apprenticeship absolutely yeah 100 percent. so are you earning while you're learning most definitely yeah what a great opportunity that's brilliant so I'm just gonna um leave you just for a moment Sam and I'm gonna kind of ask the same thing across to you as well Shane you know you work in a very different environment um to, to Sam so there are different sort of chef, chef opportunities and different levels good morning Paula it's great to have you on with us well it's all right it's okay so Paula is another one of our amazing speakers you are you are a little bit small it's fine Paula and you are on mute at the moment but we are going to come back to you um, in just a, a while because I know that you'll have some very, very valuable information and um, to give us as well. So it's great to have you joining us. And um, so, um, Shane, just as, as I say, the same kind of thing. What kind of um, chef roles are available within, you know, within handpicked within the sector that you work in? But also, how could somebody get into, you know, working for an organisation, um, say like um, handpicked hotels and what opportunities are available? And I would say it's very similar, like what um, Sam said, we are very, very similar. So we have the position from apprentice chef to executive chef because we have uh, 22 hotels in total and every hotel will have a uh, multiple kitchen or outlets. Um, at Wood Hall, we only have one kitchen, so we I don't have executive chef on site, but we have one to manage all the sites. Uh, in my kitchen, uh, we have apprentice, call me chef, chef the party, uh, senior chef the party, junior sous chef, senior sous chef, all levels. Wow, um, so it's quite a big br brigade that you've got in the kitchen to work all together to ensure that the food's going out, that the service is great. Yes, and I I see all different roles. Um, they're different because they have a different responsibilities and have a different duties. That I will say probably is the difference. And of course, like Sam said, skill and knowledge is very important. Um, I always say the skill for chefs can bring you anywhere you want to be, but then you have to get the foundation right, and then you learn at the job. From beginning, I will suggest. I, people who don't have uh, experience will start from apprenticeship because you actually learn at the job and of course yes you get paid as well brilliant that's always a bonus so you know an apprenticeship an apprentice and um, they finish their apprenticeship you've mentioned a couple of chef roles there such as um chef de party can you just explain a little bit about what a chef de party might do within the kitchens and how an apprenticeship ap apprentice might become a chef de party 
chef the party is slightly higher position in the kitchen. So the chefs need to be able to manage one section. For example, it can be a larger section, it can be garnish, it can be sauce section from ordering, prepping, service, clean down. So you are in charge of all everything happening in that section. Of Fantastic. course, the party that will get involved to create dishes as well. Brilliant. So, you know, there's that progression from being the apprentice, learning the foundations, as both yourself and Sam have said, and then you can move off into those different roles within the kitchens as well. Yes, definitely. And is that a role, is that a pathway that you followed, um, Shane? I kind of uh, jumped, um, skipped a shaft of party, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I start from com chef to hat chef, um, pretty much every level apart from chef the party. And do you know, isn't it great that you actually, you know, there's all these different roles, but depending on your skill set, depending on the opportunity, you don't have to do every single one of those roles to actually be able to get to where you want to be within your um, career. So this, yes, this is the beauty of this industry. It depends on how passionate you are. That probably can shorten the time you uh, of your training. You might reach a uh, junior sous chef level for an apprentice in two, three years time, it's all possible. It depends on how hard you actually push yourself and how passionate you are and how quick you can learn all these new skills and take on board. Brilliant. And so you've mentioned passion there. So it's not just about learning the skills. It's about really wanting to be a chef, wanting to cook, wanting to have that opportunity to, you know, treat people with the foods that you're cooking every single day. Yeah, definitely. I would say that is the key. If you don't have passion, whatever you do, you're going to be very hard, very difficult. You will struggle. If you have the passion, then every plate you deliver as a chef, you no matter how much hard work you put through, it, it's very rewarding and uh, you are worth it. That's fantastic. That's some great, great advice there. Thank you, um, Shane. So I'm just um, I'm going to come over to you now, Paula. It's great to have you on with us. I know how busy you are. So this is this is the reality of industry. So, you know, we, we have a 10 o'clock meeting and sometimes we just can't get on because industry says we need you. So it's really great to have you with us, um, Paula. Um, and, you know, I know how busy you are. So thank you um, for taking the time out of your schedule as well. Thank you. So we've just spoken a little bit about chef roles through um, Sam. So Sam works for um, for Compass and um, Shane works for Handpicked Hotels. Um, so, you're, you know, you work for another food service management, CH and Co. So um, can you explain what kind of chef roles that you have within your business? So um, it's probably similar to um, just some of the conversations I've just had there. Um, it is um, anything from a common chef level, I guess, all the way up to my level. Um, so in between that, so you've got common chef, chef de party, um, we're kind of missing the kind of chef to party, senior chef to party moment at the moment um, within the industry, I think. And then we're kind of a lot of head chefs, executive chefs. And then the team that reports into me is a food development team. So you've Brilliant. got development chefs um, and then I've got a head, head of culinary operations and I've got a creative director who also respo- reports into me. So I over, oversee a part of CH and Co's business, which is called Vacheran. So can you explain a little bit about Vacheran and your role as well, um, Paula? Yeah, so um, basically Vacheran is, um, I guess, a contract caterer, but we're a premium contract caterer within, um, which is based only in London. We've got a couple of um, accounts or, or say, say businesses that have little um, subsidiary um, like sites or whatever outside of London, but our business is London, so we're quite London-centric as such. Um, we've around 130 or so sites um, in total, um, and they're anything from kind of law offices. Um, so we call it premium BMI. So um, a business and industry is a sector, um, and anything from law offices to European banks to um, actually we've got a lot of tech businesses that kind of work alongside us, and um, yeah, kind of banking industries and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Fantastic. And what's your role at the moment, Paula? So I'm director of food, actually, um, for, for Vacheran. So I oversee all of the food strategy um, and anything to do with chefs, culinary, um, marketing, concepts. <laughs> I love it. Love so it. Yeah. that's amazing. So that's quite a way. So what right. is your background, Paula? What kind of things have, have you so done to get into I actually, I started 
around 15, so it was only yesterday, <laughs> just <laughs> yesterday. around 15, um, in actually there was a new there was a Hilton hotel that was opening very near to where I lived in Ireland and um, I started kind of as a bit of a host and I worked in went in and I kind of just loved the family vibe to it I was still at school um, and I kind of worked in every kind of department and then I, I did that for a couple of years mostly kind of just working in the bar service and you know um, conference and banqueting um, and then I moved to Glasgow to go to university so I came up quite academic actually so I went to University of Glasgow um, and I was there loving life I wor worked in reception um, for the first year and then I didn't want to go home for the summer um, <laughs> because I was loving life um, and uh, they I asked around the hotel and the only um, job was a breakfast chef position um, so I did it, my degree um, uh, kind of I did that over the summer and then I went back and I did my degree and I did breakfast I did like 40 hours a week I was loving it um, kind of in the Thank hotel you. as well as doing the degree um and then someone phoned in sick for a larder I was it was like during the week and someone phoned in sick for the larder service fifth that evening I'll, I'll do it and they were like <laughs> off you go kind of thing and I was like no I'll do it and um which I did it and that was it and and okay. I kind of never looked back and I kind of so I spent 20 years in Hilton um I and I kind of summarized that a little bit but it was 20 years I was an executive chef in about 12 Hilton hotels all over the UK Wow. Um, I did a regional job for Hilton and then I moved into restaurants. I'm oh, sorry, I moved into contract catering. I did a group exec chef role um, within a contract catering called Painting and Burn. Um, through that, then I moved on to restaurants, um, a lot of quite um, uh, quite well known restaurants within uh, London. So I opened up quite a lot of new start like startup about 40 at such in central London. And then from that, I've come to Vacheron. Um, and I'm with Rash around about um, a year, eight, about 18 months or so. Yeah, That's brilliant. What a great career that is. You yeah. know, spanning from starting off as a breakfast chef and then going, yeah, I'll just do the ladder chef, not a problem. Right. And again, it's what um, both Shane and Sam have talked about, it's that passion. Once you find that passion and you've got All that bug, passion. It doesn't it doesn't go away, does it? And it takes you to wherever you want you want to go, which is I amazing. Think, I think it's kind of the same. I say this all the time. I think it's like it's kind of the same in everything in life. If you love it and you've got to love it yeah. and nothing in life comes easy to you. So whatever it is, you've got to love it and you've got to work hard for it. And if you you know, there's two types of chefs. There's the kind of chefs that come in, want to do a great job, love to be around food, and um, but they have family and they want a different yeah. style. That's great. We need them. But there's yeah. other kind of chefs and they've got the buzz. They can go all the way and they can have an amazing, successful career. I've traveled the world doing what I do, you know. I love it. I, I missed out the bit I worked on. I worked on um, a yacht actually for about two <laughs> years, which I kind of went all over the world in, and I I did some um, time in ski resorts as well, like as a head chef. So Brilliant. yeah, it, it can take you anywhere as long as you want it. Yeah, absolutely. And just before you came on, Shane chef said that chefs are travelers, which is true. Right. Kind of get yeah. your feet dirty. You want to move around and do lots absolutely. of different things, which is which is amazing. Absolutely. And you'll find it easy to travel around if you quite kind of if you're a chef, because actually it's just such a transferable, um, you know, kind of skill set. And um, it's not to be underrated, you know, chef being a chef, it's kind of like you need skills and, and kind of you need a palate and all this kind of stuff, you know, so you can travel the world with it. That's fantastic. Thank you. So you, we've spoken about some of the other chef roles. You mentioned a couple of roles there that we haven't quite um, kind of covered. You, you mentioned okay. the food development chef. What kind of right. things would a food development chef do? So within, um, it depends what kind of, um, I guess it depends what kind of um, area of hospitality you're in. The area I'm in at the moment, so food development, is anything from working alongside chefs to, um, you know, just help them, mentor them, coach them, um, you know, just, you know, kind of, you know, a lot of chefs these days have, you know, some things like imposter syndrome, and they're kind of not feeling they're good enough, and there's some mental health things going on there and stuff. So there's a bit of that kind of support. But then obviously, the, 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 foodie side to it you know you can create concepts you might be kind of like really good at something um so there's one of our chefs is kind of working on a Tex Mex he likes barbecuing so he's oh, kind okay. of creating a concept from that and what we'll do with that concept is we'll take it full full throw not from an idea in his head but he'll cook the recipes for it and he'll kind of bring the whole thing to fruition and we'll market it and it'll come you know he'll kind of come up with the name of it and we'll work with marketing people to actually it'll look like something we could launch a restaurant in 
Um, and then another bit of like the fun, a fun bit of food development is actually um, innovation workshops and this kind oh, of stuff that so you're dealing with a lot of sustainability and, and partnerships with um, just really great little small suppliers and growers and you know it's just the world is it is is a brilliant job I'd, I'd like to do that job again but, yeah it sounds yeah. great I think but, it's yeah, fine yeah, it as well Paula <laughs> right brilliant <laughs> now that's I mean and again you know we've 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 got three great people on here that have, have you know told us their story and have explained those chess roles and it, it's just great for our young people to know what opportunities right. are out there and that you're not just going to be stuck in a kitchen you know doing all these long crazy hours and not getting any rewards for it actually there's a training there's a development there's a support it just sounds it right. sounds absolutely absolutely wonderful so thank you so much um for that Paula um, Sam, I'm just going to come back over to you because we're going to start to wrap this up um, in a moment with some questions and answers. But um, Sam, why should young people consider a career in the kitchen? I think the most important um, thing about it is that it's one of the few industries where your passion, your love and your drive is, is what takes you the furthest. You're not going to get judged for how old you are or where you've been before. Um, the most important thing to your progression is is how much you love your job and how much effort you put into it and that will always get recognized and always continue to take you wherever you want to go and whatever area of the business you want to go into you can visualize that whether that's traveling whether that's into development whether that's into a certain area you can visualize that you can work hard and you can achieve it wherever you've come from um, and that's something that's super special about our industry that's fantastic advice. Thank you so much, Sam. And, and um, Shane as well, I'm going to ask you the same question. Why do you feel people should consider a career um, within the kitchen? Um, like what I mentioned before, this is a skill can bring you wherever you want to go, because that is my own experience. I travel from China and uh, to Australia, experience, experience different food culture. Um, and I love culture i love people so you can learn about different people different culture their background so you will have a different concept uh, for your own life as well and also this is an industry full of possibilities there's so many different roles you can choose from no matter you're good at managing organizing you're good at managing people even or you look just simply love food so this <laughs> industry can provide everything and then you can bring all along with you as long as you have the passion you're always willing to go extra miles for it and um, most importantly as long as you love it and then enjoy it yeah. yeah absolutely and you've kind of come full circle as well Shane because you've recently been involved in Future Chef as a Sam and, and Paula as well and you mentored one of the young people through to the to the national final and he had um you know he had so, quite some anxiety issues as well and you really helped to mentor him and he flourished how did that feel and what you know what would you say that um, the industry can offer in terms of supporting young people through their career this is the most rewarding thing I've done this year really so he's very really young he's only 15 years I'm not going to mention his name yeah. he's great but he has certain mental issues and uh, from very, very young and uh, he couldn't focus on study. It's very difficult. Um, but when he's in the kitchen, he's absolutely a different person. He's very organized. He's very brave, very confident. That is what cooking can change a, a person. And also normally he's really it's a bit difficult for, for him to listen to some advice, but when he's in the kitchen, he likes to be treated as a chef. So Absolutely. when you give him some advice, he will take on board. That will benefit his mental health because he will learn so much experience from people who had the experience and he will improve. He will be on the right route rather than just having problem in his own head. So I think this is just a platform for himself to express his passion and then he will get reward straight away from teacher, from mentor, from even the students and then he knows he can do something great. Absolutely. So to build and confidence, this is really beautiful for me. And so it was 
so great to watch him, wasn't it, at the at the national final, just it, progress how he did. It was absolutely fantastic. And that is what the industry can offer, that confidence, that support, that safety net to help to support young people in their careers right. as well. Yes, the, the industry absolutely changed cur current, I would say, two, three years. It's not like old school kitchen anymore. So we do have... Um, the mental health awareness and uh, we, we do even have an apartment to, to support people to help us your help out your life and uh, in most of our kitchens doing working four days and three days off for example yes so you can have life and work balance and uh, when you are off um you you can kind of recharge and uh, you come back as a creative head that's brilliant. And that's some really, really great advice. And, um, you know, the passion that's coming across from me there as well. And for that support in the industry, it's fantastic. And I saw Sam nodding and Paula's nodding. So absolutely agree uh, with all of that. The industry has changed so much over the past mm -hmm. um, few years. Um, and, you know, and it, you can have that work-life balance as well. So it's a really great message to get across. Thank you. And finally, to you, Paula, why should, why do you feel young people should consider a career in the kitchen? I just think it's the most like everything you know the other guys here have said I just it is the most rewarding um career I could never have imagined to have such a rewarding career and I wasn't you know my kind of parents and my kind of family was just like what in God's <laughs> name are you doing um and I kind of just felt this real longing and this kind of pulling to be in it but mostly like so not only is it have I traveled not only have I kind of you know I've grafted and then money rewards and all this kind of stuff comes from it when you get kind of up the ladder but also mostly it's kind of the friendships and the camaraderie and the kind of you're not on your own you know and we're talking about old style kitchens you know you know I was a female in the 90s in the Nordic kitchens and they were they were a bit mad to be honest <laughs> but like I loved every minute of it but they were a bit mad and I think that actually you know the friendships that I have and long-standing friendships that I have with a lot of people in the industry at the moment and and that's what I really kind of got into it was the the kind of you know we used to go for a drink or we would go we would do things with families now now I'm older I do things with families you know we go to picnics and this kind of stuff but you know <laughs> it's the friendships you kind of make um and, and long because you're going through whatever it is you've got this whole team of people that you're going through yeah. Yeah. either it's a service or it's a kind of uh, you know I don't know you do team briefings and all this kind of stuff and there's a real kind of competitive edge to being in a kitchen and and so you're definitely not on your own you're with this big group of kind of people who are all quite like-minded um you won't get on with everybody of course but um you know so I think that's the most kind of like thing that stands out the most for me is just like I currently have a team of around 12 or something now and even at this level I love my team you know and we it's like I was looking on LinkedIn the other day and it was just like my team says like oh I love I love my job and I'm like I love my job yeah um and I'm not just saying that because it's kind of you know actually when you get you know exactly what you know um Sam was saying um you know if you have this kind of rewarding kind of um job that you're walking into and you're with like-minded people then it's it's kind of all good yeah because yeah. you've got a good work like balance and work and you know so it's maybe home that's the issue kind of thing you know <laughs> no that's yeah, brilliant. I could, I could not recommend it enough it's fantastic. It is a family. You know, I, I've worked in kitchens right. and it is, you're very close knit. You all work together. You're very like minded people. Right. Like you say, you're not always going to get along with everybody, but there is that that camaraderie. It's something very, very special um, yep. when you're a chef. It's something very, very special indeed. Um, so I would like to say a huge thank you um, to yourself, Shane, and to yourself, Sam, and to you, Paula, for taking this time out to, to talk to us about the different chef roles, the different areas that you work in, and hopefully to have encouraged um, some of the young people that are listening today um, to consider a career in the culinary sector as well. So I am just going to pop out to the schools there. Does anybody have any questions if you want to pop it in the chat? or if you want to turn your microphone on that would be great nothing coming through as of yet you've, I think you might have answered all of the questions they might all just be in awe of what you've just um, said to us all um, as well which is which is amazing and um, so I will just double check one more time to see if anything has come through 
Now, and you know, if anybody does have any questions um, after, oh, what qualifications? We have got one. What qualifications do we need? I, so, I can answer that. Paula, yep, yeah, Paula, Sam and Shane, what qualifications you can do you have, that need? Yeah, I mean, you can have uh, anything up to business degrees or you can have nothing. We'll take all of you. Um, you don't need <laughs> nothing as long as you've got a great attitude. Um, and you want to learn and you want to be part of a, a, a fab team, then we'll take anyone. doesn't matter. Even if you don't, Brilliant. you know, we obviously I would I would encourage you to get English and math and those kind of things. They're essential life skills. But other than that, you don't need any uh, um, qualifications other than a great attitude and a want to and a spirit to kind of want to bring some good stuff to the industry. Brilliant. Sam, would you agree? Yeah, exactly. The same thing. All we ask for in someone that comes into the business is a desire to learn um, and, and a passion to, to work hard with us. We will teach you everything right. you need. Um, like Paula says, if you have English and maths, it does help. Um, but even with that, if you come onto our apprenticeship schemes, English is included, maths is included all the way up. Um, and that also goes for reskilling. We've had people come from all sorts of things. It's not just about a young person that doesn't know what they want to do yet. It can be someone who's tried something different and wants to come and reskill. It can be someone who's been anything, a hairdresser or whatever you, you've been before. You can you can come to us. We'll teach you what you need. Just come to us with an open mind and a desire to learn. Fantastic. And Shane, is there anything that you want to add? I think it'll cover it all. Yes, you can have a qualification or you can have nothing but the passion and the right attitude. So great. These are great messages of passion and great attitude. It's fantastic. And we have had uh, another question as well, um, which is what are the next steps for a young person who wants to get into into the industry? Um, you know, can, can Springboard help them, do you think? Definitely. So as, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear the first part of the question. So what are the next steps for a young person who wants to get into the industry? Um, obviously at Springboard we have a range of um, programmes and opportunities for young people as well. So we have um, our Career Scope, which is a one-stop um, shop for careers, information, advice and guidance. We have live jobs on there, um, some of which um, from your organisations. We have um, apprenticeships. Um, we have an apprenticeship hub on there, which um, pulls down um, live apprenticeship vacancies that are available. We have CVs. Um, we have um, CV support and so much more. We even have a Career Scope profiling now um, where teachers can sign up and make a career scope profile and we also have um, a student one as well so the teachers can sign up and find out more about different events that are going on our programs such as future chef shane so i think you were just about to say yes future chef can help to support with that and um, to really help to motivate students and um, sorry to help to support mm -hmm. the teachers and um, learn much more about the industry but at the same time we then have the student profile so student can create a profile that profile will stay with you for the rest of your um, of your career, really. It will build with you and it will ensure that you um, get access to our events and um, you can link um, your teacher can link with you as well. So any opportunities that have come up that your teacher thinks may be great for you, they can signpost you. Um, but we are here, you know, we have a live chat function and um, that can help to support you as well. Um, and there were lots and lots of developments that are happening with our career scope um, platform, too. So keep an eye out um, on your emails for um, for those developments um too so i know that my um my fantastic line manager amanda who is our head of careers and education is um well our national head of careers and education she's um popping a few um little pointers there that are in the chat to help to support you um as well um, and to just reiterate some of the things that i've said because we've got so much i don't have enough time to be able to tell you all about that mm -hmm. um but it's great and you know and obviously springboard we have these um we have our amazing sponsors and our amazing business partners such as handpicked hotels and compass and ch and co and Vashering that are really there to help to support you so if you want any advice about work experience and for any chefs to come in and do demonstrations mm -hmm. and for any site visits and things please do get in contact with us and we can support with that as well is that something that you you would be up for helping and supporting with putting on the spot there sam paula and yeah. um Absolutely. shane about getting young people into the industry Absolutely. and uh, we've actually had a springboard um success story here specifically so in Tell unit i've it, had sam. a springboard um person come in so he was uh, with us and and the good thing about that experience was um it wasn't that 
we advertised the job and he took a permanent position with Springboard. What we actually did is we took him on site for a time, a specific amount of time here. So he came to us at head office for six months specifically. And then what we did is we moved him around um, our connection of sites and our opportunities in the different parts of the business here. Um, he did six months with us going and being exposed to all sorts of different things. That, at the end of that six months, we said to him, look, um, what was your favourite part of the business? Um, he chose a business and then we supported him with an internal apprenticeship application and he's now on an apprenticeship with Compass at one of our other sites that he got exposed to via that. Um, nice. So it's not just a case of Springboard can help put you in one place and that's where you're stuck. Um, with companies like CHCO and Compass and things, we're so broad that actually you can come to us, we can put you in a load of different places, expose you to a load of different things and then you can make a decision and we can help you progress from there. So it's sometimes it's a try before you buy or try before you settle to find exactly where you want to be in the industry. Exactly. Absolutely. Brilliant. Fantastic. So yes, there are lots of great um there are lots of great pointers within the chat as well. So if you wanted to have a look at those, um, that would be fantastic for anybody who was accessing the recording. If you do want any more information, you can um you can visit careerscope.uk.net, um, and we can also send out information. Um, if you go onto our Future Chef website, which is futurechefuk.net, then you'll be able to access um more information via there as well. So does anybody have anything else they would like to add? Before we sign off, I just want to say a huge thank you again to yourself, Shane, to yourself, Sam, and to you, Paula. It's been absolutely fantastic. Your insights have yeah. been amazing. You can just tell the passion that comes, um, you know, that comes through, and also the fact that you know you've given some really great messages to our students around how to get into the industry. You know that you can help to to grow and develop them. It's been very very invaluable, and I would also like to say a massive thank you to our sponsors, Caterer.com, as well. So if there's nothing else from anybody, I shall sign off and say thank you very much, and wish you all a great day. Thank you very much, and take care. Thank you guys. Thank you so bye. much. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.